This is NVIDIA's Fermi, one of the first GPUs with a mature CUDA architecture designed specifically for high-performance computing. It can execute up to 24,000 arithmetic calculations simultaneously, a record-breaking scale of computation in the early years of 2000s, an improvement of 50 times over traditional non-CUDA GPUs. This is a CUDA core, a silicon component on the processor die. This little guy had a very specific role. It can execute either a floating point or integer instructions. This simplicity allows the CUDA cores to be scaled horizontally along with other CUDA cores, forming an architecture that can execute graphics and scientific programs with tens of thousands of threads, a scale of computation that was previously unimaginable. Coupled with this excellent hardware was an easy-to-use CUDA API for software engineers, enabling them to write programs that needed high parallelism. This combination of the hardware-software engineering in the CUDA technology made general-purpose computation on GPUs, called GPGPUs, a reality, marking a turning point in the history of high-performance computing. GPGPUs open opportunities for programming applications that required thousands of parallel calculations expanding the market of GPUs beyond the traditional fields that were limited to just graphical applications. An important area for this was scientific computing, where researchers performed simulations and analysis on massive datasets. These workloads were beyond the computational reach of CPUs. GPGPUs led to advancements in applications for scientific computing, such as computational fluid dynamics, quantum chemistry, artificial intelligence, and in the entertainment and gaming industry. However, behind the design of this engineering marvel lie some of the most complex challenges in the processor design that NVIDIA's engineers had to solve. The biggest of these challenges were the ones due to intense parallel execution of complex arithmetic instructions. Executing thousands of threads simultaneously required a completely redesigned memory hierarchy for optimal performance and improved thermals to keep overheating and excess power consumption in check. Solving all of this with the limited available hardware at the beginning of the 21st century. Let's discuss the engineering behind one of the most important technological developments in the 21st century, the backbone of modern graphical computing, CUDA. Understanding the beauty of its architecture, its ability to perform numerical calculations at previously unimaginable speeds, and how everything works together as a single computational machine, the engineering behind NVIDIA's CUDA architecture. The problems that GPUs had to solve was very clear since their beginning, speeding the execution of workloads that involved large amounts of numeric calculations, like in the case of weather forecasting. These workloads were graphics and scientific applications, hence a dedicated hardware for arithmetic computation was required. The hardware should be capable to perform calculations with a high degree of parallelism, otherwise the resulting throughput would not be better than the CPUs at that time. The CUDA cores formed the building blocks of the hardware. This, however, was one part of the problem. The other part of the problem was to make a simple API that software developers can leverage in the existing applications, to make it compatible to run on GPUs with very little modifications. This is a program that adds two numeric arrays, A and B, of length 5, and stores the result in C. Ideally, it runs on a CPU, and the execution will loop five times on one thread that runs on one CPU core to complete the addition process. With a few changes, this program is ready to run on a GPU. Instead of executing sequentially, like in the case of a CPU, the GPU will perform the addition process in an array of five items parallelly. This happens in a concept called multi-threading, where each addition happens in a separate thread. A thread is an isolated set of instructions that performs the addition of one item from each array, in this case. In other words, the addition of 5 items will be scheduled on 5 separate CUDA cores, allowing parallel execution of integer addition instructions. In a real-world scenario, like in case of a graphic-intensive game with multiple positional vectors, the arrays will contain millions of items with lots of arithmetic-heavy calculations. The performance difference between the sequential and parallel execution models would be much more visible. But why can't we create thousands of threads and compute the arithmetic heavy calculations on a CPU? Theoretically, we could. However, the performance would suffer tremendously. This is mainly due to the architectural design of a CPU. 
To understand the reason, let's see the die of an Intel Core i7 processor that was launched around the introduction of NVIDIA's CUDA technology. This CPU has four cores, each occupying a significantly large portion of the processor die. This tiny area in each core is responsible for arithmetic calculations, and the rest of the circuitry is dedicated to execute general instructions like conditional branching. This isn't anything bad, rather it fills the purpose of a CPU which is to execute normal programs with lots of conditional branching as quickly as possible. More transistors per CPU core helps in single-threaded performance along with taking more space in the processor die, however, leaving less space for additional CPU cores Cores, resulting in low parallelism. Over the years, CPU designers have focused towards improving single-threaded performance by increasing the clock speeds and improving the instructions per clock. On the other hand, GPUs like in case of Fermi have most of the area dedicated to parallel execution of arithmetic instructions. This simplified architecture of the Fermi GPU shows the majority of the die area dedicated to CUDA cores which contain the ALU logic. The fact that the majority of the GPU die area is dedicated to circuitry for ALU operations is the secret behind the high arithmetic computational scale offered by GPUs. Let's understand how these CUDA cores work in real life. This part of the die is a CUDA core, which along with other CUDA cores forms a group of 32 arithmetic processors. Beside these CUDA cores are 16 load and store units. These units can be imagined as small containers that can temporarily store data via the load and store instructions. These help in cache management, reducing the latency in accessing data and providing memory safety by protecting data from race conditions. Then there are four special function units that helps the CUDA cores to perform certain trigonometric and logarithmic functions. These come handy in workloads like computer graphics, financial modeling, and data analytics. Below the CUDA cores is the L1 cache, a high-speed temporary memory that is local and accessible to the CUDA cores. Together, all these form a streaming multiprocessor. When a user starts a software program, like a graphic-intensive video game, it creates thousands of arithmetic threads with the help of the CUDA API. These threads are grouped into thread blocks based on the GPU kernel function, each thread block being independent of each other. The CUDA program then organizes the thread blocks into a set called grid. Each grid has access to the global memory, which can be used for communication between different thread blocks. The independent thread blocks implement coarse grain data parallelism, while the threads in each thread block provide fine grain data parallelism. With this, we are ready to pass software instructions in form of threads living in thread blocks to the GPU hardware. In the GPU, the grid of thread blocks arrive via the PCIe host interface. This interface connects the GPU and its DRAM memory to the system CPU and its main memory. Through the L2 cache, the thread blocks get stored in the DRAM memory of the GPU. Now the GPU system is ready to perform the work. Next, the GigaThread component looks for available capacity on the workers or the streaming multiprocessors. The GigaThread assigns the work in form of thread blocks on the streaming multiprocessor based on the available capacity. This allows to balance the workload in the GPU. The streaming multiprocessor gets the thread blocks filled in its L1 cache. Using the single instruction multiple thread execution model, the multiprocessor groups the threads in form of warps of 32 threads. Each multiprocessor has two warp schedulers, which schedules the warps onto the 32 available CUDA cores. Using the help of the load and store units and the special function units, the 32 CUDA cores perform the arithmetic computation parallelly, executing up to 32 instructions per GPU clock. During the execution, if additional data is needed from the system memory, the multiprocessor can request the data through the L2 cache. This is how the streaming multiprocessor performs the complex arithmetic calculations, processing up to 1500 concurrent threads simultaneously. NVIDIA's Fermi GPU had 16 such streaming multiprocessors. To summarize, starting from the API at the software level to grouping work in form of threads in the thread blocks, and finally performing parallel computation on thousands of threads through multiprocessors, the CUDA architecture forms the backbone of GPU processing that is applicable even in the modern GPUs.
High scalar parallelism on the other side creates challenges of high power consumption and high thermal output. The power consumption in a processor can be categorized into static power and dynamic power. Static or leakage power is used to maintain the state of a processor when it is in the ideal state. This power maintains the stored data in the temporary memory, such as registers and caches. Static power consumption remains mostly constant. On the other hand, dynamic power is consumed by a processor when it executes the instructions. This power is used to charge and discharge the device capacitors as it performs its operations. Dynamic power dominates the total power consumption in most semiconductor devices and can be controlled with a clock speed. The higher the clock speed, the higher will be the throughput of the instructions executed by the CUDA cores. Since the workload on the CUDA cores is variable, the performance of the CUDA cores can be controlled by a technique called dynamic voltage and frequency scaling. This technique dynamically adjusts the voltage and frequency of the processor depending on the workload. Lower the workload, lower can be the operational frequency and hence lower the power consumption. The amount of power consumed by a processor has a linear relationship with the operational frequency and a quadratic relationship with the operational voltage. At lower frequencies, the core can operate at lower voltages. This reduces the power consumption and the amount of heat generated by the CUDA cores significantly, ensuring the stability of the system. Dynamic voltage and frequency scaling has proved to be effective in optimizing energy usage while still providing high performance for various parallel computing applications, allowing the CUDA architecture to be used in solving several real-world challenges. In the field of engineering, CUDA has been used to accelerate the simulations of complex systems such as aircrafts and automobiles. Engineers have used CUDA-based softwares to simulate the aerodynamics of an aircraft in flight, allowing them to optimize the design for maximum efficiency. Similarly, CUDA-based softwares can be used to simulate the behavior of a car during a crash, enabling engineers to design safer vehicles. By speeding up these simulations, CUDA has enabled engineers to develop better products more quickly while also reducing the cost of development. In the financial industry, CUDA has been used to accelerate the complex mathematical calculations used in risk management and trading. For example, CUDA architecture's ability to parallelize computations across multiple cores and threads makes it well suited for accelerating Monte Carlo simulations that are used to analyze the risks and returns associated with financial investments. With CUDA, traders and risk managers can run these simulations much faster than before, allowing them to make more informed decisions in real time. In scientific research, CUDA has played a crucial role in accelerating the simulations of physical and biological phenomena. Scientists can now simulate the behavior of proteins and other biomolecules, which are critical for drug discovery and biomedical research. CUDA architecture allows scientists to run simulations much faster than the traditional CPU-based simulations allowing them to explore a much wider range of possible molecular configurations. Please subscribe the channel to learn more about the engineering behind various technologies that transform the 21st century. Please like the video if it helped you in understanding the engineering behind NVIDIA's CUDA architecture.